good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Lynn Rogers and I'm the Managing Director of Mio Jewellery Limited, of which Rogers & Rogers is one of our brands. We have four brands. Um, I'm here with Astrid to talk to you today about a year working with UK trade and industry. Yeah. Hi, my name is Astrid Brewster. I'm an international trade advisor uh, based up in the East Midlands. Um, I cover the area of North East Derbyshire, which includes the market town of Chesterfield, where Lynn is based. Um, that sits just on the edge of the beautiful Peak District, but it's also only 12 miles away from Sheffield, which is um, an industrious town known for, uh, city known for its steel, um, of which there's a lot of spill out into Chesterfield of what I would call grotty engineering companies. So I was absolutely delighted when I got an invitation to meet Lynn and work with her, which is what we've been doing over the last 12 months. So a year ago, I sat here in this theatre and listened to a talk from UKTI. And from that, I decided that I really needed to do a lot more with my business than what I was doing. I went straight over to the UKTI stand. I went straight over and said, you need to get me involved with somebody and I need to be able to speak to them very soon. And the reason for that was we wanted to expand. Crucial. The UK market for our jewellery was getting saturated because we only sell to one person in one small town and probably four or five people in one city. We wanted to look for an alternative market and we were exporting on a small scale, but that was people coming to Pure or to other trade shows and finding us, not us seeking those people. And we wanted to change that. So I registered my interest and then it followed, which has been an absolutely tremendous year. Really fabulous. And I met Astrid in the April of 2015. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, when I first met Lynn, like I said, it was an absolute pleasure to go and meet somebody who'd got a, a fabulous um, product. Um, but first of all, what I really wanted to establish at that first meeting was the capability capacity and ambition to export. Um, I wanted to know more about the business, who, who, who made up the business, what were the business objectives for the next three years um, and how I could fit in and help. Um, I wanted to know who Lynn was already selling to here in the UK and how um, and with a very a well-recognised portfolio of UK clients um, that all, will also add to the credibility when she starts to pitch for business overseas. Um, it became quite apparent in that very first meeting that UK Trade and Investments Passport to Export programme would be the perfect next step um, that would help the company start to look at new markets and think about how they were going to export, where to, um, and so on. So it was from then on we... Um, you joined the UK Tide Passport to Export programme, and I don't think you've looked back since, have you, really? No, not at all. No. So we wanted to establish where our new customers were going to come from. So which countries were we going to go to? Where, where were we going to be? And which was in the jewellery sector would be the most beneficial. So what Astrid provided for me was some support and encouragement. So that was the main thing. Because, you know, when you're working in a small business, which ours is still a small business, that's crucial. She provided research, the research that I just didn't have time to do. And that research was not only from Astrid, but from a whole network of people from any country that you want to look at. And the network of expertise that's come back has been fantastic. But when you're running a business, the most crucial thing is time. And Astrid gave me time because then she did the work on my behalf and that was fantastic. So we've had monthly meetings and although the years come to an end, they're continuing those monthly meetings. Emails, phone calls, direction to appropriate websites, web pages, seminars and other meetings where I'd meet like-minded people. But the other thing that she gave me was money. And most people want to know about funding, Astrid. They do, yeah. Um, I mean, 
Funding's perhaps one of the questions that we get asked about quite a lot, you know, what can you do to help? And I think, first of all, what I would say is don't hang your hat on the idea of getting loads of funding. It, it, it isn't about that. It really is about the network of support that we offer as well. Um, Lynn um, mentioned, you know, I did a lot of research for, and I did do a lot of research, but on the back of that, that's because I'm supported by a great team worldwide. Um, we're in about... 110 different markets, 190 different locations, so commercial staff working from the British embassies, high commissions, British consulates and a, a wider network that's growing all the time as well with things like, with like the British Chambers of uh, Commerce. So it's those people as well that we can tap into um, and get that support, advice, um, feet on the street really, locally engaged people who are there to support British businesses to export their products and services. But I did have funding, and I used that funding for my website development to be able to make sure that it was more user-friendly for that export market. I went on a fact-finding mission that was also helped financially by UKTI because we want to do some overseas trade shows, trade shows like this, but in lots of different countries. So I have been to look at some of those trade shows, and that's been helped by UKTI and I will have further funding to attend a trade show, which we are doing later this year. The seminars that UKTI have provided for me have been excellent. They're free or at a very small cost. The information, because Astrid's directed me to it, has been really relevant for what I've wanted to do next. It's shown me a lot of different routes to market. So it's not only about going to a trade fair. There are a lot of other ways of finding that person who's going to buy from you in all those countries. I understand a lot more about payment procedures and the fact I am going to get my money even if I send the goods early. I met businesses at those seminars that were at different stages of exporting and learned a lot from them. I came away determined and I came away very enthusiastic. But the very best was something that the UKTI do, and if you get a chance to do this, if you're serious about exporting, I can't recommend it enough to you. It's called Explore Export Regional Roadshow. And I'll let Astrid explain what okay. that's about. Yeah, so that is, it's, that's just exactly what it is, what Lynn's just said. Explore Export is a roadshow. Um, going across all of the different UK regions, um, you're looking at about 60 different commercial officers from overseas that are there to provide one-to-one -one meetings, sort of 20-minute slots. And it's really a great opportunity to talk to them about your product or your service. Um, would it do well in the market? Is there competition in the market? What about the price points? Are there any barriers to entry, taxes, import duties, etc.? But more importantly, to meet those people that are, as I've mentioned before, about being feet on the street, um, to make to build that relationship. Whilst you only get 20 minutes, they know you then, they've got your business card, they've seen your product. So when you engage with them via email or telephone afterwards, they've got a better idea of who you are than just an email just out of the blue. So it's crucially, you know, it's, it's important just to go along and meet those people. But before you do, is not just to take a scattergun approach to it and think, you know, there's only so many markets you can cover, um, but perhaps take about six to eight different countries and have a look at them um, and why you'd want to export. Perhaps do a little bit of desk research yourself beforehand, uh, but like I say, getting along to them and meeting other like-minded businesses that are there too, tapping into uh, the wider network, workshops again, seminars, etc. It, it, it just goes, it goes on. The, it's limitless what the, um, the support available is there for you. Um, Lynn did mention about workshops not so long ago and seminars events on the UKTI website and I think the address is on the back of the flyer that's that's out in front of you uh, ukti.gov.uk um, you'll find links to all the different um, events that are happening all over um, the regions uh, webinars as well covering things like export pricing international marketing social media um, building business with agents and distributors routes to market getting ready for trade, show access, uh, trade shows abroad. So it's, uh, you've, you've really got to tap into that website and have a look and see what's, what's available to you. So before I went to this uh, roadshow, Astrid and I sat down, we planned it. 
she had really explored the countries for me that I could sell the most of my product to. And we got down to six. So we had 20 minutes to pitch to those representatives on a one-to-one. -one. Astrid, with, my, with her support with me, because I was on the passport program, Astrid came with me. And so we planned this thoroughly. We met with the six countries. We opted that four were going to be the very best for us. And since that time, I've got four people in those countries who are working on my behalf or on my company's behalf. And what they're doing, they're exploring big, multi, big national companies that I can work with. They're exploring the right department stores in that country. They're looking at the trends in that country and the price point that I need to sell at. Absolutely vital. They're looking also at what actually sells. I sell silver and gold-plated jewelry. I sell semi-precious stones. I sell se precious stones. So I need to know what's going to sell in the markets that we've chosen. And also need to know what the fashion is going to be like in that country. You might know you might know that in Japan, you can't sell a ring bigger than in a size L, which is very small. Well, you can't, that's for sure. So that's the sort of thing that I needed. And from there, I'm getting weekly emails, I'm getting the results, and they are working now while we're sat here, probably not on a Sunday, but they are working at getting me into the right department stores and into the right stores in those countries, which is fantastic, absolutely amazing. I haven't got to do anything for that. And I think um, it's, it's key to remember as well that there's a real kudos uh, for British products design, um, you know, for the innovation and creativity that British companies um, can provide um, so not forgetting that and people are willing to pay that bit more in some of those markets so your price points might be a lot higher than what they're going to be in the UK so but it's all down to research at the end of the day um, and that's where UK trade and investment come in that's where people like myself come in as an international trade advisor it's finding somebody that you can work with locally that you know you you get on with generally um, what we don't like to do is try and pay you up with somebody who might be for Lynn, for example, it would have been no good if somebody's got a background in satellite navigation or anything like that. It's finding the right person so you've got that relationship. And because I see myself as an extension to Lynn's workforce, really. I'm not there on a full-time basis, but I'm there whenever she needs me and when she wants to tap into me. And, uh, yeah. So, where do we go now? We will do overseas trade shows this year. It might mean cutting down on some of the British ones, but that's okay. I've not told them. That, no, no, we will come back to Pure. Um, I've had to take the time and take the time out of a busy working day to assess the business and to see where we are and where we're going. And I've had to build that strategy, which I might have done five or six years ago and not revisited. And I've had to do that in order to make sure that I'm going to get the most out of this year that I've done with UKTI. I feel confident about the four markets that we're going to. I'm on weekly communication with the people from the embassies in, that, on, in those areas. And we've got a meeting next week where we are really going to nail actually getting the jewellery out there and into those markets. And the support does not stop. So if I can, we're here to answer any questions because there's a lot more to the year, but we didn't want to just say, oh, and then we did this, and then we did this, and then we did this. But there is a lot more that what we have done. But what I can encourage you to do is go along and find your local person and see if that local person can do what Astrid's done for me this year and got me really fully, fully determined to make a, a big mark in export, a big mark. Yeah, yeah, we've had a great 12 months, it's been fabulous, um, and I think we've achieved the objectives that we set out to do under the Passport to Export programme, um, and that was, initial, that was to identify those key markets that we want to look at exporting to, and get ready for those markets as well. We've done as much research as we, as we can at the, for this stage of the game, um, and it's really now, like Lynn said, it's getting out to those markets and getting paid. Uh, for uh, you know for the hard work um, 
So the UKTI stand, I know this is the theatre, I don't know if you I'm sure you've all come across it, um, it's by the main stage. If you've got time today, go along and see if there's somebody there that you can talk to. Um, alternatively, log on to the UKTI website and also the Exporting is Great um, website. You might have seen some of the adverts, uh, they started at Christmas, I think in between Downton Abbey was the first one, just uh, so huge audience, hopefully we've got, and um, all about the demand is out there, you could be too, so you absolutely could. Have a look at the website, there's always live business opportunities on there, um, along with a whole host of other information, loads of online resources that can just start you off and get you going and thinking about exporting. And the other thing that um, I think you'll find is of a benefit, I've had Astrid's time for free, and I've also got all the other people who are working on my behalf at no cost to the business. So I've not had to allocate my funds from where I'd got them allocated to make sure that this happens. This has all been down to UKTI. And that, I'm really grateful because now I'm, uh, I'm right there, ready to go. On an international platform, not just a domestic, yeah, so, okay.